This might surprise you, but high blood pressure is often called the silent killer, especially for older adults. It quietly damages blood vessels until a heart attack or a stroke happens without any warning. About two in three adults over 60 years have high blood pressure. Medications like amlodipine are literal lifesavers. In fact, in 2022, amlodipine was the fifth most prescribed medication in the US, with over 70 million prescriptions. But here is the catch. What if you notice a certain red flag while on this common medication? A sign that what was supposed to be a helpful hand is now actually stabbing you in the back. Imagine this scenario. You've been taking a lodipine for a few weeks to control your blood pressure. One evening, you kick off your shoes and you notice your ankles are very puffy. And when you press them with your fingers, they leave a dent, a deep dent. You might shrug it off initially thinking, I was on my feet all day, this must be normal. But in this video, we will uncover why that warning sign isn't always harmless and everything you must avoid if you are taking amlodipine to stay safe, including a food that you definitely shouldn't eat while you're taking amlodipine. So stick around. We will also use real stories, expert advice and a bit of old-fashioned science. Stick around because knowing how to spot trouble early and what steps to take can literally prevent a medical emergency and keep you and your loved ones healthy. By the end of this video, you know exactly what amlodipine is and what it does and also the number one sign that it's not agreeing with you. Common myths that are dangerous while on this medication and a checklist of foods and supplements and habits to avoid when you're on it. These insights are especially crucial if you're 55 years or older, a time when we just can't afford to take unnecessary risks with our heart health. So let's dive in. Starting with what is amlodipine? Simply put, amlodipine brand name Norvask, is a medication that lowers high blood pressure and eases chest pain, which is called angina. It belongs to a family of drugs called calcium channel blockers, which relax and widen your blood vessels. Think of tight blood vessels like narrowed garden hoses. Amlodipine opens them up, so blood flows more easily, reducing pressure on your heart. By doing so, it helps prevent serious problems like heart attacks and strokes and means that more oxygen-rich blood will reach your heart. If you have angina, which is chest pain from heart disease, amlodipine effects will mean that more blood will reach your heart muscle, so you'll be much less likely to get chest pain during exercise or stress. It definitely won't fix clogged up arteries, but it helps your heart not have to fight against a tight vessel all the time. Now here's the key concept. While amlodipine is protecting you from high blood pressure dangers, it can also cause side effects. The most important one is swelling, especially in the ankles or feet. Medical experts say that swollen ankles and legs are very common side effects of amlodipine. In fact, in clinical trials, it was the number one one reported side effect. More people complained of ankle swelling on amlodipine than any other side effect. Why does this happen? Well, by widening up the blood vessels, amlodipine sometimes lets fluid leak out a bit into the surrounding tissues. So gravity pulls it all down to your feet, shoes will start to feel tight, socks will leave deep marks and indentations on your skin, and your legs may feel heavy. And not only is this uncomfortable, but it also is not always benign. It could be a sign of danger. And we will talk about what to watch out for soon. Aside from swelling, other effects to know about include dizziness or lightheadedness, fatigue, flushing, and sometimes heart palpitations, feeling like your heart is racing or pounding. It's crucial to understand that some side effects could signal serious issues. So watch out for shortness of breath, very rapid or irregular heartbeat, fainting or chest pain. That's worse than before. If these occur, they could indicate that your body isn't tolerating the medication. For instance, difficulty in breathing or swelling in your face or tongue could mean a dangerous allergic reaction. But don't worry, we'll talk later about exactly which symptoms 
mean? Call the doctor now versus mention it at your next visit. The main takeaway here is know the common side effects and the one big warning sign, which is swelling, that we will focus on because recognizing it early can spare you complications. Let's talk now about a few myths and misconceptions that happen when you're taking onlodipine. These are not only about the medication, but also about its side effects, because misinformation can be dangerous, especially when it leads someone to suffer in silence or make a hasty decision. Myth number one, swelling in my ankles is just normal aging or harmless inconvenience. The truth is, while mild ankle swelling can occur from standing too long, persistent swelling when you're on Enlodipine is not something to just ignore. It's actually, as we talked about, a drug side effect. And it's your body's way of waving a yellow flag. Swelling of the feet and ankles in older people can be minor, but can also be an indication of more serious illnesses, such as heart failure, renal failure, or liver failure. In other words, swelling isn't always benign. It could mean your heart is struggling or that the medication is causing significant fluid retention. However, doctors likewise caution the leg and ankle swelling, especially if it leaves indentations, which is called pitting, could either signal heart failure or could be a side effect of enlodipine. Either way, it requires attention, especially if accompanied by other symptoms, like shortness of breath, rapid weight gain, or swelling in the abdomen, which are classic indicators of heart failure. Don't just buy bigger shoes or compression socks and hope for the best. The swelling might be your clue that onlodipine isn't the best fit for you or that your heart isn't working quite well. So if your ankles look like balloons by the evening and you are on onlodipine, it's not too late to change the medication. Talk to your doctor. Myth number two. If I get side effects like swelling or dizziness, I should stop taking olodipine on my own. The truth is you should never stop a blood pressure medication all on your own without medical advice. It's understandable that you want to quit something that's causing problems, but abruptly stopping it can be risky. Remember that quitting cold turkey can cause your blood pressure to shoot back up or your angina to flare up. Doctors will normally either reduce the dosage or change that medication for another medication so you don't stay unprotected. Myth number three, feeling dizzy or tired on allodipine means it's not working. That is false. Actually, feeling a little bit dizzy or fatigued in the first week or two can be a sign that the medication is actually working, perhaps a little too well at first. Allodipine is lowering your blood pressure and until your body adjusts, you might feel a little bit lightheaded, especially when standing up quickly. The Harvard Heart Letter notes that side effects like feeling tired or lightheaded are not unusual initially and often resolve once your body adapts. Don't give up on the medication after a few days without giving your body a chance to get used to it. On the flip side, if those symptoms persist or are severe, example, you're fainting or so woozy that you can't function, then that's more than just a passing side effect and does require medical attention. Myth number five, if I don't have any symptoms, my high blood pressure isn't a big deal. The truth is high blood pressure often has no obvious symptoms. You can feel fine while damage is happening internally. Meds like alnodipine are prescribed to prevent disasters like stroke and heart attack that uncontrolled blood pressure can cause. Remember, Remember that just as Dr. Randall Zussman of Harvard Mass General put it, high blood pressure is actually probably 25 different conditions that all cause the same response, a measurable rise in blood pressure. People have very diverse responses to the medications, but because there are so many options out there, there's absolutely no need to tolerate side effects. We can find one medication that works for you. In short, control the pressure, but find the right way to do it, which leads us to a practical guide. What to do if you're experiencing side effects, like swelling, and how to safely adjust course. We'll give you that promised checklist of things to avoid, including a common fruit juice that can turn this pill from a friend into a foe. So let's get practical. If you're taking a lodipine and you notice troubling side effects, here's what to do step by step. Number one, monitor and note your symptoms. 
symptoms. Pay attention and write down what you're experiencing. For example, if your ankles are swelling, note when it started, how severe it gets. If you feel dizzy, note if it is only when standing up quickly or even when sitting. This will be invaluable when you speak to your doctor so you can clearly convey what's happening. And if you can, please monitor your blood pressure, both when you feel normal and when you feel symptoms. This could reveal, for instance, that you're getting dizzy because your blood pressure is dropping a little bit too much. All right, now let's talk about the things to avoid while taking allodipine. These are super important for staying safe and getting the most benefit from the medication. Some of them might surprise you. Here's the checklist. We start with grapefruit and grapefruit juice. This is a big one. Grapefruit can turn a normal dose of amlodipine into a huge dose of amlodipine. The Cleveland Clinic warns you should avoid eating a lot of grapefruit or drinking a lot of grapefruit juice while taking amlodipine. Too much of this fruit can worsen side effects by increasing how much medicine you have in your body. Well, why does this happen? It's because grapefruit inhibits the CYP3A4 enzyme that normally has the function of helping break down amlodipine. This inhibition leads to a higher concentration, increased levels of amlodipine in your bloodstream, intensifying side effects such as dizziness, flushing or swelling. Avoid certain medications and supplements. Some drugs don't play nicely with amlodipine. For example, certain antibiotics like claritromycin or erythromycin can actually cause issues if you're taking amlodipine because they also cause an increased level of amlodipine on your blood. Antifungal medications like itraconazole, ketoconazole can do the same thing. On the flip side, some epilepsy drugs like fenthoin or carbamazepine or the herbal supplement St. John's Wort can lower amlodipine levels, potentially making it less effective. Amlodipine also has a known interaction with high dose of simvastatin, which is a cholesterol drug. It can increase statin levels and risk muscle side effects, so doctors tend to limit simvastatin to 20 mg when combined with amlodipine. If you are on cholesterol meds, be sure to check with your doctor if you need to adjust the dosage if you are taking amlodipine as well. There are also some common over-the-counter medications to avoid, like descongestants, like pseudopinephrine found in some of those cold medicines and nasal sprays, because they can raise blood pressure and work against your amlodipine. Ibuprofen can also do the same thing. It can raise your blood pressure and make it much harder to control. So use it sparingly and with medical advice. Avoid excessive alcohol. Both alcohol and allodipine can dilate blood vessels and lower blood pressure. So together they make a terrible combo that can make you extra dizzy and lightheaded. Alcohol can also cause flushing and might worsen any swelling because alcohol can make you retain fluid or get dehydrated. Confusingly, both can happen depending on the dosage. Moreover, too much alcohol will raise your blood pressure over time, counteracting the benefit of you taking amlodipine. To sum it up, grapefruit is the poster child of foods to avoid. Be also cautious with other medications and always cross-check. Take charge of your life and share this information. If you found this video helpful, share it with your friends or family who also could be taking allodipine or other blood pressure medications. You might save someone from a nasty side effect or even a hospital visit by spreading this knowledge. By the way, if you ever had swelling from allodipine, drop a comment below. I read all of them and I would love to hear your story. Also consider liking and subscribing. It will help us a lot. I thank you very much for watching and I see you on the next video. Bye-bye!